and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Claire and I'm a young stay-at-home mom of two and I have Irish twins, which means that my babies are less than a year apart. Today's video looks a little bit different. I am going to be sharing with you guys my story. So I have a lot of anxiety about this. I also have COVID right now, so <laughs> I'm sick. This vlog is going to look a little bit more different than what my typical vlogs look like. I'm going to be sharing with you guys my story. I threw up right before this too because my anxiety is like through the roof. But the reason why I'm sharing my story with you guys is because I want you guys to get to know me more, get to know me a little bit better, and see an unfiltered, unedited version of me. I want you guys to be able to relate to me, hopefully, in some of my parts of my story. If I don't tell my story, who is? You know, it's my story to tell and I have been through a lot. I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I didn't go through certain things in my life. So I'm not going to glorify anything. I'm not going to go into extreme detail about anything, but I am going to share with you my life and my journey and what I've been through and what I'm going through. To get started, if you follow me on Instagram or you went to school with me or whatever, you know or you might have noticed that I fell off the face of the earth in like around 2018 and I went to rehab and I'm going to touch on that in a little bit but I'm going to um, just share with you a little bit about me first and then kind of go in order of like how everything happened. Really quick, um, a little bit about me. I am 23 years old. I am living in South Carolina. I was actually born in Vail, Colorado, and then I moved to South Carolina when I was two. So I've been living here for over 20 years now. I live on a very small island, and it is only 13 miles long. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows each other's business. So about me growing up, I was always active throughout my whole entire life I've always been in sports I've always been on some type of a team so I've always been very active um, I never really felt like I was really good at one thing though like I was in a soccer I did gymnastics um, I was on the cheerleading team I was one of the captains in eighth grade and then in high school I was a cheerleader as well um, I was on the tennis team in my high school so I I was good but I never felt like I was like the best at one thing I'm the oldest of three so I have a little sister and a little brother and my brother and I are like 11 years apart so there's a huge age gap between us. So him and I aren't that close. Yeah, I am definitely the black sheep of my family by far. I never have felt like I fit in somewhere. So like growing up, I always had uh, like a best friend. Like I never had a big group of friends. Um, I always had that one person, that one person that I would do everything with, that one person that knew everything about me until we had a falling out and then I would have a new best friend. And then that pattern like has been with me throughout my whole entire life. That's something that I've noticed. Another thing about me is I am a very black and white thinker. So I'm either like all or nothing with things, which is a character defect of mine, but that's okay. I had my first drink when I was in eighth grade. It was the summer before going into high school. So I just got out of middle school. So where I'm from, school is like a little different. So you go to first grade through fifth is our elementary school. And then sixth to eighth is middle school. And then nine through 12 is high school. And it's all three separate schools. So my first drink was when I was getting out of eighth grade and I was about to be a freshman in a high school. So growing up, like I said, like I was always very active. And before I started working out, I was was very skinny like I was a stick and that's just how I am genetically that's just how I am like normal I did not weigh much to give you an idea yeah I just got out of eighth grade it's the summer before ninth grade I'm really little really skinny and I have my first drink I remember when I had my first sip of alcohol ever and that was when I was like 10 or 12 and it, my mom gave me a sip of her uh, like it was either a Mike's hard lemonade or it was a Smirnoff ice I can't remember 
remember, but it was one of the two. And I remember ever since that moment, like I could not wait to drink. Like I thought alcohol tasted good. So I just remember that I always had an obsession in my head about alcohol. So then fast forward to when I was about to be a freshman in high school. It was my summer and I had my first drink with my friends. We were in Amelia Island on a vacation. So then continue into the ninth grade, um, I was dabbling into drinking. I didn't know my limits. I didn't know how much I could drink. I just always drank. When I mean I always drank, like I always drank to black out from day one. Me drinking was me blacking out. Me getting drunk was me blacking out. Me going out or having fun was me blacking out. That's not normal, but at this age, I had no idea that that was not normal. March 14th, which I will never forget that day. So it was March 14th, 2013 or 2014. It was a Friday. What happened was I was with my best friend at the time. We'll call her Brooke. My friend Brooke and I, um, we were best friends, and we went to this guy's house. There were older guys there. There were all guys there. So me and her, me and Brooke, were the only two girls at this party, which already is a bad setup. It's a bad ratio. And there was like 12 guys there. Anywhere from like 11 to like 13 guys, I would say, were there. I'm a virgin at this point. I have only had my first kiss by this time. I have not done anything sexually. There's this place called Frosty Frog, where I'm from. What it is, is it's like a slushy, and they mix it with Everclear, and they call it the Frosty Frog. And so you can get it by the gallon. And so my friend got it by the gallon, and we brought this gallon to this party with my friend Brooke and I and these like 12 to 13 other guys. So I'm really little, right? I'm really skinny. It doesn't take much for me to get drunk. I don't know my limits because every time that I've drank in up to this point, I've blacked out. And I, so I clearly am powerless over alcohol. I clearly don't have control over alcohol. At this point of the night, I should have been taken to the hospital to get my stomach pumped, but my friends did not want to take me to my parents' house because I was so messed up and they didn't want to get in trouble. And so nobody knew what to do with me. And I could barely talk. I was super pale in the face. I was, I couldn't even sit upright. I couldn't even walk. I was like on the verge of like being unconscious. At this point, three guys decided to carry me to the golf course. This is what I've been told because obviously I have no recollection of any of this, but there were lots of people there, lots of witnesses. And this is the story that was told to me over and over again. So I was carried by these three guys to a golf course where they raped me. They sexually assaulted me. So there was no shape or form of me being consensual to this because I was physically carried to a golf course um, where they assaulted me. And then they tried to have sex with me, but I was too tight. And I don't know if this is like TMI, but this is my story and this is what I'm gonna share about it. So they tried to do that to me, but they couldn't. So then they did whatever they did to me. And then I woke up four hours later in a bathtub with cum all, all in my hair, leaves all in my hair, throw up all in my hair, like stuff all over me. I had the most foul taste in my mouth. I was told when I woke up, in the bathtub, because I woke up in a bathtub and I, that's not where I remember I, la I was last. And so I woke up in this bathtub and I was like, Brooke, what the f happened to me? And then some of the guys that were at that party were there at this other house where I, I was in the bathtub. So we were at this party, they did whatever they did to me and then my friend didn't know what to do with me. No one knew what to do with me. And like I said, I should have been taken to the hospital. I should have had my stomach pumped. I had alcohol poisoning and I was not okay. They didn't take me to my parents' house. They didn't take me to the hospital. They took me to this other guy's house who had a guest house and there was the bathroom and I was in the bathtub. I asked my friend Brooke and the guys that were there, I said, what the f happened to me? And they told me that I sucked three guys' dicks at once. If I'm like half unconscious, I don't even know how I was able to do that. I wasn't even sexually active before this. So in my head, when they told me that, I was like, oh, like I did that. That was a Friday night, okay? That was a Friday night. Okay, so then on Monday, we go back to school, right? This 
spread like a wildfire like i'm not even kidding like my mom found out about this monday afternoon because so many people were talking and talking and talking and it got into somebody's hands who told their mom who called my mom and i remember this day like it was yesterday so i was texting one of the guys because he was he was smart and he knew that they all fucked up and he was like we were just drunk we didn't know what we were doing like he was trying to keep his side of the street clean so that way he wouldn't get in trouble i was talking to him and i hear my mom go claire she was upstairs and i was downstairs so then i ran upstairs and she told me that she heard what happened the weekend before because i lied to my mom and said where i was that weekend so i got caught in a lie I got caught drinking and then she heard that I sucked three guys dicks at once so she called me a slut that's exactly what happened she the first thing she did was she called me a slut and that was extremely hard I was 15 years old a virgin not sexually active at all and this horrible thing happens to me and it's turned around completely to make it look like I did it when I was like un technically unconscious during all of it and then my mom calls me a slut and it grounds me takes my phone away this was in march and i was grounded until the end of the school year which was june that was my, her reaction um and then going back to school like i said like this spread like a wildfire like i'm not even kidding like so many everyone knew about it the teachers knew about it the guidance counselor knew about it i would sit at lunch with my cheer squad or like a lot of the girls that were on my cheer squad they stopped talking to me i had no friends i had nobody i was all alone and the only attention i got was from guys or the older guys in my school because here i am this new freshman girl and they hear that she did this and then they wanted to take advantage of me as well so the only attention i got was from guys and the older guys in my school. The school in the next city over knew about this. So like my reputation got destroyed. My reputation was destroyed. Um, I had no friends, my parents hated me, and the only attention I was getting was this, like this, it wasn't negative attention, but it was bad attention because it was from guys who were trying to also take advantage of me. There was lists written on me in the bathroom walls, there were things about like three dick Feldman was on the bathroom wall. One day and like my dad came to the school and like literally forced them to like paint over it, like so many things have happened and this incident happens to me this young 15 vulnerable little girl she had no one and the incident was horrible and it was wrong and it should have not happened at all like where was my friend brooke when this was happening and i could point my fingers at anyone that i want to i was the one who drank and i chose to drink so that was my fault but what happened should have never happened and it shouldn't happen to anyone and if you can relate to me with this i you are not alone and we are so strong that we are overcoming this and can overcome it and i've done tremendous tremendous work around my assault like hours and hours and hours of therapy okay so for me when i was getting all this negative attention like i went down the wrong path is what i did is I turned into this person that I wasn't. I started liking that attention that I was getting from all these guys because like I said, I had no one else, no one, no family, no friends, no nothing. I was alone in going through this horrible thing that happened to me alone. And so I picked drinking and drugging and sneaking out. And I remember my sister, my little sister had an iPod and I would literally wait till everyone in my house was sleeping. I would steal her iPod and like log on to Facebook and like Snapchat. And um, that's how I would like talk to people to like come pick me up and I would sneak out all the time. And like my door is bolted in my parents' house because I would sneak out so much. They bolted my door to the ground. <laughs> but anyways, so I, I went down this the wrong path. I started drinking and drugging and doing all these bad things. I was just a wreck. During all of this, like I feel like my whole high school career, like I was trying to fix my reputation and like rebuild who I was and be like, no, this isn't 
me, but yet I would do these things. I don't know if anything that I'm saying makes sense. Um, anyways, and so when I was 16, I went to my first rehab and my parents sent me for drinking and at the time was like, I don't have a problem. I don't need to be here. And so I, they sent me to this place called St. Simon's by the Sea and it literally was like a mental institution and I was there for three nights and four days and they sent me home because I wasn't I didn't need to be there I didn't need that level of care I did not need to be there and I made it sound like no I just drink with my friends like I I made it seem like I didn't I wasn't an addict and I wasn't an alcoholic and I didn't need to be there that really traumatized me being there after that incident like i don't remember it happening so that like of course it was wrong and it shouldn't happen and all the little incidents that happened after that big one is like what traumatized me so much like the bullying at school me walking down the halls and having fingers pointed at me being like that's the girl that's the girl she that's three dick feldman that you know like rumors would be spread about me one time i heard that um, there were like five guys that I did something with like literally like things that I would never do Like things were said about me rumors were spread about me things were written on bathroom walls about me things were m Written about me online like like I was like this target of like Claire did this Oh my god, did you hear Claire did this? Oh my god Claire did this and it's like but Claire didn't even do these things like they're rumors and like it, like I was just the talk of the town like it, and it got to the point where I wanted to hang out like I did make new friends and I did was restarting to like rebuild my reputation in a way and like some of my old friends from the cheerleading squad like still talk to me when I did make new friends like their moms knew about what happened to me and would call my mom before I would hang out with them and be like because they were scared they were scared of me of influencing their daughters in a certain way. It wasn't even me, like this happened to me, you know? So, but I'm just trying to put in perspective of like how much everyone knew about it and like how big like Claire Feldman was. And it wasn't in like a, oh my God, Claire is such a nice girl. It was, oh my God, Claire Feldman, like no. That was my high school career. I went to rehab when I was 16, and like I said, I got out of it because I wasn't supposed to be there, which I was, looking back, I should have been there, but um, at the time I didn't think so. And then, in, so this was all in ninth grade, and then in 10th grade, I stopped drinking. I knew I had a problem, I knew I was powerless over it, but again, like I didn't know what an alcoholic was, I didn't know anything about that. I remember I tried to quit drinking um, and I did quit for a little bit, but then I started again. And then um, I started to drug and um, I would dabble into it and then I s ran away once. I remember, I remember I was like so broken and I was, I just wanted, all I wanted was somebody to hold me and tell me that everything was gonna be okay. That's all I wanted. And I remember I came home from school one day and I couldn't try out for cheerleading anymore because I got ex or suspended from the school and it was and I got suspended during the time of tryouts so I couldn't be on school campus. So and that's another thing. I would get in trouble with teachers. I wouldn't do my homework. I was hanging around bad people, people that I should have not been hanging around. I was skipping class. I was skipping school. I like I was just going down the wrong path. And so one day I remember I came home from school and I just wanted that comfort from my dad, from anyone, but my dad happened to be home. And I remember I had this huge island counter, like table in our kitchen. And I remember I was eating cereal after school and like I broke down in front of my dad and I was like, I just need somebody to hold me and tell me that I'm going to be okay. And his back was to me the whole time and he couldn't say it, he couldn't do anything. I mean, his back was towards me. And I remember I had my glass cereal bowl and I threw it across the counter and I ran, and I ran away. And I, whew, I ran away and then I smoked weed for my first time that night. 
and then I came back home because I had school the next day and there were cops at my house and I remember I grew up in a very nice house my dad's a builder he built our house and I remember that this cop judged me so hard and he judged me based off of what my house looked like and he looked at me and was like like how dare you run away like you have everything and he said that to me and I just remember looking at him and being like you don't know anything that I'm going through right now but he judged me based on the size of my house and the look of my house and my parents and like how dare you run away from from this and from your life and like how dare you and I just remember like that's why I've never judged anyone before or like that's why I don't judge people because you never 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 know what somebody is truly going through and then I found fitness so I, I was taking private tennis lessons at my country club and I realized as I was, remember I'm really scrawny, really little, no, no ass, no butt, flat, everything. And um, I remember I started, you know, bent, like squatting down to hit the ball and I like saw results in my butt and I started working out. I taught myself everything I knew about fitness. I would watch a bunch of YouTube videos. I was re researching um, like how to grow your butt and like weightlifting and lifting weights is what kept coming up. So I fell in love with the gym. Like the gym was my thing because nobody else was there for me except the weights. Like every day after school, I'd go to my country club with all the old people and I would lift and I would teach myself new exercises and teach myself like new routines. And then I found fitness. Fitness was like my new thing, my new best friend. So I graduated early in 2016 from high school. Um, I did dual enrollment, which meant that I like started at a technical college that was nearby and I did that. And that's how I like graduated early. You know what I mean? So I graduated early. And then I got kicked out of my house because my parents found weed in my car. At this point, I was smoking every day, all day. So fitness was like such a big, important thing to me. But also I was like smoking a lot and all day long. And it got to the point where I would be working out in the gym and I would leave the gym, like go out back to smoke and hit <laughs> and hit my pipe real quick and then come back in and finish working out like so i was starting to get powerless over weed as well like i it took over me it was to the point where i stopped working out and like because i was too lazy and i was too high to work out and i just wanted to go eat food instead like it i was powerless over it but i didn't realize that in the moment i was living um with three guys from the gym that i knew and I was literally living on the floor in their house. My parents took my car away. I had lost my job because I kept calling out because I wanted to get fucked up. Alcohol and, and drugs were like really a big part in, of my life at this moment in time. And I let drugs and alcohol take over my life. So I lost my car, I lost my job, I lost where I was living, you know what I mean? And so I moved in with these guys and I lived on their floor. And then I went to Israel because I wanted to find my happiness. And if you heard of the birthright program, so I'm Jewish and if you're Jewish, you get to go to Israel for like free. <laughs> It's not for free, but they say it's for free. So I went to Israel to like find my happiness because I thought going to another country and like climbing mountains would make me cure myself. And so I got kicked off the trip because you were allowed to drink on the trip, but you weren't allowed to get drunk. And imagine telling an alcoholic you can drink but not get drunk. I was the only one that got kicked off the trip. I was the only one that couldn't follow the rules. My birthright trip was 10 days and I was supposed to stay two weeks after that to like find myself and find my happiness and I couldn't be because I got kicked off the trip. So on the 10th day, instead of me staying in Israel, they took me to the airport with everyone else. And I had no flight home because my flight was supposed to be two weeks after. So my parents had to spend thousands of dollars to get me a flight to come back to America. My dad picked me up from the airport when I, got, when I flew back in and he blindsided me and tried to take me to a rehab. And I was like, oh hell no, like I'm not going to rehab. Again, I was like, I don't have a problem, I don't need to go. And so we got in a physical fight driving on the highway and I pretended like I was gonna 
jump out of the car, but I knew I wasn't. And so my dad like stomped on the brakes and like stopped the car. He was in the driver's side and I pulled him out of the car. And then he, we were like fighting on the ground. People started to pull over and then the cops were called. And then I went to the cop station and then my, one of my roommates picked me up. That way I didn't have to go to rehab. At this point, I spent all my money in Israel for rent that I was supposed to have. And I got a bunch of money for my birthday because my birthday is around, is January 10th. And this, when I went to Israel, it was in December and it was like around, it, I was there during Christmas. So I got like money for Christmas, I got money for Hanukkah, I got money for like my birthday coming up soon. And so I spent all my money in Israel on weed and um, alcohol. I had no more money to pay my rent when I got back into America. So my roommates knew I had a problem and they were done with my shit and they kicked me out. And they were like, you need to go to rehab. And at this point I knew that my only option, my only other place to go was to rehab because at this point I was kicked out so many times and I moved around to different friends' houses to the point where I had to be with those guys. Like I used up all my resources at this point. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to rehab and I told myself I was like I'm only gonna go for two weeks and then I'm done Like I'm I'm gonna come back home and my life is gonna be grand and happy and Whatever went to rehab and I was stuck there it like there was no way like I was over 18 at this point So I could have like signed myself out, but I had nowhere to go. No one to pick me up like I said, my resources were all used up. So my parents sent me to one of the number one trauma-based rehabs in the country. Um, I went to a place in North Carolina. Um, the program is only for 90 days. I was there for 97 days. And it was also a place, like I said, it was a, a, a really good trauma-based rehab. So there were girls that were there for drugs, alcohol, mental illnesses, like all sorts of things, all like all types of traumas. And so that's where I did tremendous work around my trauma. Like I said, I was there for 97 days and then they sent me off to a place in California and it was a transitional care. I was supposed to be there for three months but I was only there for two months. And then I moved to Florida where my best friend at the time was living and she actually was in a halfway house there because we were drinking and drugging together throughout all of this. So she had an issue too and went to rehab at the same time I did. But I had no idea because I went to rehab before her and I was stuck there and I had no communication with anyone. I, like this is what I'm talking about. Like I literally fell off the face of the earth. And so after California, I went to Florida and I lived in my halfway house and I kept getting in trouble. I relapsed. Um, I almost had six months sober at this point, which is the most I've ever had to this day. And um, I relapsed and then I came back to Hill and Red where I'm from and then I was in such a dark dark place and so my dad was like why don't you go back to Florida so then I went back to Florida and then that's when I snuck out of my halfway house and I met Justin and I met Justin at the gym and then um, I snuck out of my halfway house to like meet him and like be with him and so I kept getting in trouble at my halfway house because I couldn't follow the rules and then I moved in with Justin and then he left to go to Colorado I got a ticket for my birthday in January to go visit him in Colorado and then I never came back to Florida so I went um, out to Colorado to meet Justin and be with him and then I never came back and then we got into some trouble with our roommates there, got kicked out of where we were staying and then went back to Florida and then we found out I was pregnant in Florida. I didn't get my period for like 17 days after it was due and I was like, yo, like something is going on and so we pr took a pregnancy test and that pregnancy test came up positive like that like the fastest positive sign I've ever seen in my life like it I was clearly pregnant and so I remember I like freaked out because at this time I'm what 21 and I'm pregnant and I have not a good relationship with my parents or my family at all I'm living in Florida with Justin and then I told my parents that I was pregnant and so we moved back to Hilton Head um, because my dad like I said earlier he's a builder and so he gave Justin a job with him and that was like the best gig that we could have gotten I gave birth to Ava and then two months later I found out I was pregnant again with Jax 
I had my babies back to back and I remember my parents were so pissed at me and I've always known that I wanted to be a mom too like I always felt that I always knew that from a very very early age so I knew when I got pregnant with Ava like I was going to keep her and I would not give her away or I would not get an abortion or anything like that like I could never do anything like that um, that's just not who I am but yeah so I had Ava and Jax the past couple of years I've been dealing with being a mom my mental illnesses and trying to be sober and recently like I said in my two vlogs ago that I said that I was sober and I almost had a month and then I relapsed again and so now I almost have like a couple weeks um, but I'm like and this is an, another reason why I'm sharing my story so you guys understand like my background and get like a feel for why I'm sober and like I need to be sober to be the best mom possible to be the best version of myself possible you have to want it you know like you have to want to be sober to stay sober this is my journey this is what I'm going through my dad looked me in the eyes and told me to stop filming for YouTube he said I'm not gonna get anywhere on YouTube he said that I'm not good enough and literally looked me in the eyes and told me to stop I said that and I'm still filming and I am filming my journey of like this is what's happened to me and where I've been and this is where I am now and this is where I'm going and like to show people like my full journey and not just stop filming and then film one day when I'm at a good place and be like oh this is where I've what I've been through and talk about it you know what I mean like I want to show people how I'm transforming and how I'm growing and where I'm going in my life. That is me, everyone. I hope everything made sense. I know I jumped around a lot. I hope. Go Claire, go Claire, go Claire. I hope that you guys learned a lot of new things about me. Um, if you went to high school with me, now you know the real true story of what happened with me and the three guy thing that everyone refers to. I hope you guys understand me more. I hope that some of you could relate to me. Um, maybe I opened somebody else's eyes up to their issues and their problems. I hope you guys still can support me and follow me on my journey. Be a part of my life and my journey. And subscribe to my channel so you don't miss another video or another thing. My life is very chaotic and dramatic and Justin always tells me I should have a, rea a reality TV show. I hope to show more of my real and raw self on YouTube and not just like an edited version of everything and acting like my life is perfect and I'm this, you know, what this great mom. Um, I am a great mom and I also am an addict and I'm an alcoholic and I have a lot of issues but I'm addressing them and I'm going to grow through it and go through it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to leave a comment down below and let me know um, what you like to see from me next and um, to give this video a thumbs up. And I love you guys so much. Thank you for your continued support and everything like that. I love you guys and until next time, I'll see you next time. Bye.